Half a century ago, Jane Jacobs asked the Rockefeller Foundation to fund a book project about American cities. And on September 8th, 1958, exactly 50 years ago today, Rockefeller Foundation President Dean Rusk approved the first of two grants to support her monograph. In order for a society to flourish, she wrote, there must be a flourishing city at its core. At the Rockefeller Foundation, this bedrock recognition informs and inspires our enduring commitment to and our investment in flourishing cities around the world. It really is in our DNA. We've partnered with New York City to help promote cultural innovation and creative expression, increase the supply of affordable housing, break the cycle of intergenerational poverty with a pioneering cash incentive program, and reinforce neighborhood resilience to the consequences of climate change. Tonight is notable for another reason, too. We are joined by Pulitzer Prize-winning author Robert Caro, best known today as the master of Lyndon Johnson's scholarship. But as we know, he has also written extensively and so informatively about Robert Moses. Tonight, for the first time, Bob will talk about what he uncovered, Jacobs and Moses, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> But I knew her in an essential way, different way. I knew her through her work, through her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. She got me with the very first page when she laid out what questions should he, she would be asking in the book. What, if anything, is a city neighborhood? And what jobs, if any, do neighborhoods in great cities do? The questions that in all these other books that I was reading, no one ever asked. And I was approaching things from a very different angle from hers. I was thinking of The Power Broker less as a biography, but about using Robert Moses' life as a way of examining what are the true roots and essence of urban power, power in cities, power not only in uh, New York, but in all the cities of America in the 20th century. Where did Robert Moses get the power to build what he built? Where did he get the power to destroy what he destroyed? But gradually, during the seven years in which I was doing the research for the book, I came to realize that I wanted to show something else, the human cost of what Robert Moses did. So I came to feel, as I was doing the book, that if I wanted to show political power truly, it would be necessary to show, in effect, its, it show its effect on neighborhoods and communities. There is one other thing I should mention about Jane Jacobs, and it relates to the only time I ever met her in person. Jane had moved to Toronto, but some years after the power broker came out, Mary called and said Jane was coming to New York and would like to meet me, and of course I wanted very much to meet her. So Mary gave a buffet dinner, and I remember that Jane Jacobs and I sat the whole evening on the sofa talking. Of course, what we wound up talking about was Robert Moses. <laughs> he didn't like either one of us very much. We had a great talk. Turned out that we each had a question that we wanted to ask the other. Jane wanted to ask me what it was like to meet him. I wanted to ask her what it was like to beat him. <laughs> I remember that the next day, Mary Nichols called me up and said Jane had really enjoyed meeting me. And that was almost as great as the blurb. Thank you very much. For me, this medal is really an acknowledgement of the vigor, vision, and effectiveness passionately demonstrated by thousands of affected residents of color and low income working within the national environmental justice movement. This environmental, economic, and social justice uprising has de redefined environment to embrace all habitats where we live, work, play, and go to school. It presents a justice and equity perspective to environmental protection and health, climate change, 
and community-based planning that empowers residents to build healthy communities and engage in development initiatives that can determine the vitality of our neighborhoods. So on behalf of the staff and board of We Act for Environmental Justice, on behalf of the Harlems of this world, I thank you so much for this honor. One beautiful day after my church had been torched in the South Bronx as a result of work that we were doing against drugs, I came out to march uh, against drugs in the neighborhood with many of the residents of the community. And you know, on that day, there were a sea of people lining the streets ready to march. But they weren't the people that I had taught, had been taught, were powerful in this city. They were folks like my dad, like my mom. They were folks like the single mom pushing her baby stroller, the elderly immigrant moms and dads. And in that moment, there was a voice inside of me that said, Alexi, forget everything you learned about power. This is what real power is. I'm thankful for this moment of glory for my little community in the South Bronx that was once forgotten. And I'm grateful for the future of this city and, and the important voices like people like my mom and dad and what they will bring to it. Thank you so very much. I thank everyone gathered for honoring us with your presence. Uh, maybe to conclude or punctuate the program, let me try one of my favorites from Jane Jacobs. She said, cities have the capability of providing something for everyone only because and only when they are created by everybody. We celebrate the life and legacy of Jane Jacobs by honoring Peggy and Alexi this evening, not only because they bring Jacobs ideals of social justice closer to reality, but also because they remind us as she did that everybody shares a responsibility to do the same. We must all play our roles in assuring that the diversity and the dynamism of our neighborhoods continue to evolve, that they evolve and not erode. We make our city better over and over and over again by making our senses of community and connection stronger. Thank you all again for coming. Thank you.